1490 AM on your radio dial and 106.1 on your FM pal. Thank you for tuning in to the Morning Glory radio broadcast with Drs. Adam and Adrian Blackstock of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. Sit back and get ready to receive a word that will transform your life. Good morning, good morning, radio family. This is Providence Adrian Blackstock, executive pastor with Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. I am excited. I am still over here in the sunshine state of Miami, Florida, with all of my loved ones and colleagues and friends and classmates. And so we have a special broadcast this morning. Um, I was here because I was able to participate in a circle of mothers, which is part of Trayvon Martin Foundation. My dear friend from college, Sabrina Fulton, a man, had me to be able to come in and participate in this wholeness and healness. And then we had a powerful preacher, Pastor Darrell Sykes, a man, celebrate one year. She's newly married. We got to get her to come in and talk to our singles. Amen. I like that plug that you put in there when you was preaching. Wait about 25 years for your Boaz. Amen. <laughs> Glory. So she's here with me. Um, we celebrated 10 years. Oh, I already feel the anointing. Oh, my God. 10 years with the circles of mothers. And I just want to say I am so I was so blessed to be in that environment. And thank you to the circles of mothers, all of Sabrina family that's a part of that and you. And everyone that made that so special for us, mothers that have experienced the loss of a child, especially through balance. And so we had this opportunity Friday through Sunday to be there. And so Sabrina, um, I messed up the timing. I told her 8 a.m. because I was stuck on this Kansas City time and all of that. And so she has a meeting. So she's going to jump in here. When we see her come in, we'll just make lead way for her. Uh, Pastor um, Darrell yes. um, to be able to come to be able to come in and speak. And okay. so, those of you that's out there in Facebook, um, I'm not going. No, I'm trying to do both of those, but I want to be attentive. You guys share the video out there, um, and so that we can get more mothers that can be blessed by this. And I don't think it's a coincidence, Pastor Darrell, that um, this is right before we go into Mother's Day and to be yes. able to have this here opportunity. So, right. Pastor Darrell, tell them. Who you are, amen. Besides my classmate from being a bull, <laughs> Mommy Northwestern, amen. <laughs> sure. Um, well, you know, I'm a kingdom builder, uh, a child of God, a servant. I, I think out of all my titles, um, being a wife, being a mother, and um, an ambassador to the Circle of uh, Mothers, to the Trayvon Martin Foundation, rather. I just love being a servant. And um, out of all the titles and everything that I do, certified grief facilitator and all that good stuff, I just love serving, Adrian. You know, um, yes, yes. I, I think it's something about that bull of spirit. Yes, <laughs> but no, really, I think you know the era that we grew up in. We we grew up um, not only our parents and our family, but the schools. You know, honestly, that we went to back in that era, we were taught to give back. You know, we yes. were taught to give back because the word, even the word of God says, "To whom much is given, then much is required." But Outside of that, I just love serving. I'm executive pastor of Bethel Community Baptist Church here in St. Pete, um, where I serve with my husband, Bishop Manuel Sykes. Um, he's been the pastor here for 30 years. My and he's God. also the state of Florida. He's the state bishop um, for the state of Florida Full Gospel Fellowship International. So, but once again, I'm um, serving. That's, that's what I love to do. And so it's an honor. Thank you for having me. Um, and thank you for just allowing me to share um, in your pain. And as always, thanks, Sabrina, you know, um, just thanks for allowing me to serve you all, um, you know, because it's something that it's, it's a circle that no one volunteers, no mother raised their hand. I want to be a part. No, yes, no, yes. no. Um, so it's it's an honor. I'm humble. Um, whenever I do get a chance to serve in any capacity um, to a mother, you know, or to a woman, anybody, period, but especially on this level. Amen. And that's one of the things that was stated and said uh, throughout the conference that none of us um, chose. So you know how you can choose to be a part of a certain group and that that was divinely done by God. And so I thank um, Sabrina for being there. Like she said, that the father gave her this vision of all this purple or what have, because that's what she needed at that time. And I was just even when we was just speaking, saying how the, I was talking with some of my intercessors, how the circle full around. Is that even though I've been in Kansas, living in Kansas City for over 20-something years, that 
you know, being able to come back at my roots in, in Miami, Florida and being a part of individuals. Like you said, we have that that bull spirit, you know, and everybody yeah. know me, I'm that warrior, you know, yeah. and to have me to be around other warriors, yes. amen, and that everything that was stated, and I'm going to have to get a chance, because A.J. Johnson, she 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 was good on Saturday as uh, well, I'm, sure. I'm going to talk about those, I'm going to try to see if I can get her on and have her talk about those spiritual tools, because yes. also when you came in, it built on that, and your title that you gave to the women, amen, is that I'm that one. And I mean, it was so powerful. And one of the things I'm going to give, turn this over to you, but it stood out. I want you to bring that out, that let this be the last year that you do not celebrate Mother's Day or allow people to celebrate you during Mother's Day. But that part, because I know we have women, especially in the greater Kansas City area, and we got people listening from all over the nation, that how that title, when you said, I'm that one, when individuals, when you exhorted the women that they're that mother that carried that child, they're that mother that did all these things. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, all right. So let me, let me just tie into some of my training um, as a, as a certified grief facilitator. It's not about title, but it's about, you know, equipping, being equipped. Yes. And so we grew up in a, um, in a church, right. And in an era where like our parents, our family, a church people, they just didn't know any better. You know, yes. so they would say things, and that's why I share it with the mothers also. Like, don't, and I know it's easier said than done. Some some people just don't know, you know, when they say things like, "Oh, uh, he, your, he or she is in a better place." Or, for, in your, in our mental, is, can we just be human? Can we just be women or mothers? The best place for our child or our loved one to be is with us. We'll get to the spiritual part later, but when we're dealing with our humanity, the void, the loss, the tragedy. But somebody say, oh, they're in a better place. No, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> you know, and so I had to um, encourage the mothers that regardless of what is said um, about them or said to them, um, especially if it's if it's deemed like, you know, inappropriate, because once again, everyone, you know, isn't there, um, that they are the mother. They are that one that gave birth to the child, that carried the child breastfed the child they remember when the child started teething when the child Amen. had a fever when the child took his or her first step when they you know potty train everything about the mothering and the motherhood experience how many times you had to go to the doctor for the prenatal care and the morning sickness everything about that experience you the mother you went through that experience no one could ever take that away from you. Um, no matter if the child lived one day, one week, one month, one year, 20 years, it is your, it was your experience. And don't let nobody take that away from you. Uh, sometimes people say, oh, well, she was a mother. No, no. <laughs> Once Come a mother, on now. always a mother because it's your experience. And as far as the, um, you know, allowing last year making sure last year was the last year that you not celebrate being a mother or allow someone to celebrate you as i shared very transparently on sunday um and i'll give you the short version because it, it still makes me emotional today my son 25 but I, I i spent many years because i was very angry with god and how he snatched my mom up out of my life at a time that i really needed her my mom had raised all my siblings children all grandkids her god kids the neighbor's kids and I was like, and you took my mama. I didn't ask you to take my mama and give me a baby. That ain't what I wanted. I want my mama. And so I just couldn't do it, Adrian. Um, I'm an adult. I, I can own my stuff. I'm spiritually mature and I'm age-wise, I'm mature. I can own my stuff. And that was some some ugly stuff about me. I just could not wrap my brain around celebrating Mother's Day. My mother wasn't here until my sister, who's now an angel, my sister, uh, Pastor, you transitioned 2018. But she told my son was like 10 years old, like enough, enough. You are denying him the right to celebrate you. You're his mother. Amen. His mother isn't dead. Your mama is no longer here. I mean, she was really hard because that's how my mama raised us, like in your face, you know. <laughs> but she was like, <laughs> your mama isn't here. His mama's still here. Now, get yourself up out this bed and come on. And, and I'm telling you, I had to apologize to my son. Um, yeah. So, so now, Amen. yeah. So now, I'm you know, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm Amen. that one. And we're gonna we're gonna come back there because <laughs> okay. we have now our sister yes. in the faith has joined us, Sabrina <laughs> Fulton over yes. Trayvon Martin Foundation and the Circles of Mothers. 
I am still over here on cloud nine. Yes. Amen. She's that, that she's that one. She's that one. Yes, she's that one <laughs> that took the vision and ran with it. Amen. Yes. I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself, whatever you want to say, how they can get connected. But one of the, oh, I feel the anointing of God, glory. But yes. one of the things that I wanted you to touch on, Sabrina, that was so fitting is that because we're in this month of mental health, we just came out of it, mental health. But that list that we sort of went through and made up in the room, but you have also walked through and heard probably even more than I have, because this has you know, only been three months for me, right? Uh, what not to say to mothers or fathers that have lost a child. And I turn the mic over to you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. And I want to thank everybody that's listening right now. Um, yes, we did have a very powerful and amazing weekend with some very strong mothers. And they lift me up just as much as I lift them up. So I thank God for the circle of mothers. Um, it was a dream that I had. And of course, there was no circle of mothers when um, when I started, but thank God, God put the, the vision in me. And also I was very, um, I can say, uh, obedient to what he wanted me to do. Um, I One of the things that I talked about this weekend was definitely mental, mental health. And this is May is Mental Health Month. And of course, we all deal with some PTSD. PTSD. Of course, a lot of people associate that with the military, but I can tell you that that's just a traumatic experience that you had in, in your life. And I can say we probably all suffer from T PTSD and we just have to get some help for it. We have to make sure that we're talking to the right people. We're connecting with the right people. And in that room this weekend, we're the right people, the moms who have experienced a traumatic experience. Um, one of the things that I joked around and said, but it's very serious, is that people don't know what to say to us once we lose a child or once somebody lose a loved one. And I said, we can write a book about the things that we've heard people say that they should not have said. We, we, we listen to people say, well, your child is in a better place. And I ask myself, if my child is in a better is in a better place, why aren't everybody else's children in a better place? Come as on, well? say that so now. <laughs> that that statement makes no sense. Um, I truly believe that God makes no mistakes. But what happens is the devil is also busy, so we have say to be that. mindful of that as well. But when I hear all of these different things about what people tell you, oh, um, uh, you know, being at the right place at the wrong time and all these different things that you hear about your child, people should be mindful of those things. That's all I ask is to be mindful. When somebody lose a loved one, regardless, you have to be mindful of that person's loss and be uh, respectful. Oh no, don't forget, to, Sabrina, when you said about, don't tell me about your 92-year-old grandma. Please <laughs> expound on that. <laughs> okay. I lost my 17-year-old son. And so as I go throughout my journey, I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, I lost my grandmother. She was 92. Oh, my granddaddy died. He was 96. Oh, my, I lost a cat. I lost a dog. I lost a job. I lost a, a husband. I mean, it, it's, it's different when you carry a child for nine months and then you have that baby and lose a child. It's a different type of loss, and people don't understand that. And that's why I talk so much about it. To the circle of mothers because we understand everybody has experienced a loss but the most severe loss is when you lose a child and if you have not been there you do not understand what that pain is like you don't understand that brokenness in your heart that was a fact that's a that's a known fact amen amen and and then also um even with grief there when you did look at the type of way a person has passed, but also when it's done tragically, you know, as in, in the case with, with you and some of the other mothers and myself that were there, we have to, not that you want to characterize, but you, you really have to look at that. So what I want the Christian community and family and friends is to, your loss is, yes, it's a, it's, it's a loss to you, but also recognize not to do the comparison. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so, and, and, and especially in the African-American community, because we got a large African-American community that's listening right now, we have to, you know, learn these things. We can no longer stay stuck. You know, when we, um, um, Pastor Darrell and I was speaking about how 
you know, we was raised up, but we're a different generation and we got to learn how to communicate better. You know, trauma-informed care, that's a big thing we do here in the Kansas City area with churches and all that. And so these are the things that we want the next generation that hopefully also that the, the circles of mothers, I know just in this one time that I was tremendously blessed that just think about as these women are coming back every year or expanding off and hearing that we can change the community. Like you said on, you know, on the news, amen. And one other thing I wanted to mention is a lot of people um, compare their loss with another loss with another loss. And I'm in no competition with anybody. I'm, there's no competition. People like to say, okay, I'm going to create a circle of mothers. It's going to be bigger and better. I want it to be bigger and better. I'm not that type of person that feels like, okay, if somebody else creates a, creates a circle of mothers, then I can't have mine. If enough room for all of us to heal, if it's enough room for all of us to, you know, try to come back to our new normal. The other thing I wanted to um, mention is that the circle of mothers is different. People don't know what to expect with circle of mothers, but with circle of mothers is so different. It's different from any other organization. It's different from any other uh, club or membership is because, we work on the total person. We work on mind, body, and soul of Amen. the person. Yes. We did not speak about anybody's cases. We did not speak about anybody's child incident, whether it was a chokehold, whether it was a gunshot, whether it was a knife, whether it was suicide and all those things. That is not what the circle of mothers is all about. It's just to build and enhance and empower the mother. That's exactly what it's about. And a lot of times people want us to talk about laws, and to talk about different things, that is not what the circle of mothers is about. Because I feel like if you cannot build the mother back up, then the whole the whole household is broken down. So we yeah. have to make sure that the mother is fulfilled and the mother is wholesome and the mother is strong before we move to other areas. Amen. Pastor Thank Rick, you. You want to add in there to anything? Yeah. Um, so in adding to that, as I shared with uh, with the audience, Sabrina before you came on um, as, as ambassadors, and that is <clears throat> having others to serve you mothers, um, you know, when you are in need um, and, and the building back up, you know, um, us being allowed to just be there for you in any capacity, um, that it's an honor. So when you talk about um, the competition, you're absolutely right. There is no competition because, you know, and I'm not being biased kind of sort of, but I don't know if those other organizations have ambassadors like our group of ambassadors that we look forward to serving the mothers we look forward did. to that we look forward to did. just being there to do whatever we can do get you settled in tote your bag check you in um get you on the dance floor for a little spin you know give you some tissue to dry your tears whatever it is that we look forward um to just serving to serve to help serve you in in the building you know in the building back up you know trying to say that right but in building you back up um being a service um just helping you um yeah in that in Amen. any way that we possibly can so it's an honor and, and sabrina really touched me is that your foundation with your family and all of that and how you also I, i'm just feeling so just present like i'm trying not to get the holy ghost over here amen that the seeing your family your mother your siblings and how you said about you're the conductor of your train and how you got to keep that train moving. Could you speak a little bit more on that? I'm going to lose my mic because I'm speaking in tongues over here. Okay. Um. The, the thing that I say, and I say this every year, and one of the things that I understood is that there are going to be some people that are going to continue to roll with me. And I said that I was the c c train conductor. And, and I'm conducting this train of my life. This is my life. Um, if you wrote a book about Sabrina Fulton, you would have to talk about chapter five where I lost my 17-year-old son. So I want people to know that it's going to be people that are going to get off your train and people that's going to continue to ride with you. The people that you've seen at the Circle of Mothers, those are the people that continue to ride with me. I had some people that was on the train and they got off the train, but I kept rolling because I couldn't turn around to see why they got off because I probably would have lost my my focus on where I was going. And so I had to stay focused and follow on my mind and follow my heart and follow God's direction that said, keep going, keep going. I had family members. I had friends. I had church members to get off that train, but it's okay. I kept right going. I kept going because I truly believe that the people that were there, including the mothers, I was supposed to be there. 
every ambassador that was there, every vendor that was there, every mom that was there, every support mom that was there, those were the people that were supposed to be there. And I just continue to ride with those people that want to be there. Amen. And because I know before we, we get ready to close here, we still got a couple of minutes. We're going to take you, we're going to pull on as long as we can, Sabrina. But that self-care, A.J. Johnson brought out the self-care, but you even gave your own test. I don't know if you want to share it here. If you don't, you don't have to. But the self-care and the importance of that, because this is keep coming back up, because as women, as mothers, we got to get this self-care down. I've been hearing it all year long. Amen? Yes. Okay. So about the self-care, um, when I first started with the Circle of Mothers, when I first started my journey, um, a part of my healing came by reaching out to other mothers. And so I would go to different cities and different states and I guess some, some other countries. I done been to Switzerland. I done been to um, uh, uh, the UK. I've been to different places trying to reach out to, to different mothers and mothers try to reach out to me. But the thing about it was, was I was overlooking my own healing. I was overlooking my own grief. So it was important for me to just take a step back and to make sure that I was taking care of Sabrina because without me being healthy and in the right state of mind, I wasn't going to be good to anybody else. So self-care is, is, is extremely important. I make sure that I take a day, um, out of my, um, off my calendar every day and that's Sabrina day and that day I de decide to do whatever I want to do I'm not going to do any work I'm not going to return any calls I'm not going to send any emails I'm not going to read any emails I'm not going to be on social media all I do that day was take care of myself and sometimes I go get a massage sometimes I walk on the beach sometimes I just sleep but that's my day and I understand that I have to have those days in order to recharge, in order for me to make sure that I'm right for myself before I can be right for anybody else. Amen. Amen. And be, um, let us know if you just have you to go. I know you had another it's, meeting. Okay. So yes. any, any last minute remarks that you have and then um, Pastor Darrell and I will close out. Um, The okay. only last minute remark, um, the only thing that I want to say is this, this is a continuous fight. This is continuous. This is not something that you just do one time and then you leave it. You have to continuously heal your heart. You have to continuously pray. And AJ told us about spiritual tools. You have to continue to utilize your spiritual tools. That's all I have to say. And I say thank you. And I hope to see you again next year. Oh, yes, yes. I may bring the whole Kansas City. So you, we may have to find a bigger venue. Because <laughs> my spiritual children, they like, they want to be there. Amen. I said, but it's not that type of meeting. Like you said, it's a special sisterhood that we did not sign up for. Blessings unto you. And you know, you're my girl. Amen. And so we'll continue. We're going to be thank reconnected you. for life. Amen. That's right. Glory. And thank you, Pastor Knight. Sykes. God bless you. Love you, sis. God Love bless you. too. Glory. Shalom. <laughs> Amen. So, so Pastor Darrell, you, um, some points that you want to also bring out anything in reference to self-care, anything about the circle of mothers? Uh, sure. Absolutely. So one thing that Sabrina mentioned that you all, that you noticed that you, um, that you feel very strongly about, and that is, um, her family and the people, you know, around her. Um, because it was her family that went through that experience with her. Yes. It was her family that went through that experience with you all. And so having that support is so important. Sometimes when we're grieving, we tend to um, cut out, you know, people. We tend to block. Mm -hmm. and, and it's only natural. But thank God at some point you then you welcome people, you know, back into that circle because you realize um, that we cannot do it by ourselves. And so you know, having that support system is very important. But at the same time, being the conductor of your train, knowing when people get off, you let them get off. And those that be on, those are the ones that are supposed to be on there to help you um, in this journey. So I feel, once again, I can't say it enough, you know, honored and privileged whenever I get a chance to serve, especially um, the Trayvon Martin Foundation and the Circle of Mothers, because, um, you know, it, it's your time, you know, now. Now, and, you know, it's always like she said, we have a list of over 200 mothers. It's so sad. It's sad. Um, and so we don't know, okay. you know, the next time. So we just do what we can while we can. We just do what we can while we can to be of service to those in need. Hey, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Ray. I want to, we got two minutes. I want to leave this in the ears of you mothers that are listening that have went through a loss. Um, and it is this. We are never promised freedom from flood and fire and from any kind of disaster or freedom from death. What God is promising here is that we do not walk through these terrors alone 
and that difficult as they are, they will not destroy us. But we have an act to take advantage of this promise. We can reach out our hand into the darkness, believing there is one there to sustain us, mm. to help us through this terrible time. There is a saying that for every halting step we take towards God, God walks a thousand miles in blazing light to come to us. So I leave this with you today, mothers, that we will reach out our hand into the darkness, trusting that I do not walk alone. And I say to you that you do not walk alone, that God is with you. Continue to trust in the Lord and lean not upon thy own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. Amen. And be a blessing to another mother. You're not alone. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory Amen. be to God. So God thank bless you, you, Pastor. We're going to get you down here to the Kansas City area. All Amen. right. <laughs> so you can tear up the stage at Glory Bound Fellowship International Church and come down with some good barbecue and yes. relax and chill in the Midwest. Hallelujah okay. to the Lamb Love of God. You. God bless. Yes. God bless and thank you, Kansas City, and all those who are listening from all over Washington, D.C., Iowa, Bermuda, and all those different places. Remember, Jesus is Lord. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, feel free to partner with us by sowing a seed at gbfic.org or mailing a check to Morning Glory at 1126 Northeast Delta School Road in Lee Summit, Missouri, 64064. If you need special prayer of any kind, please feel free to call us at 816-795-1900.